Thundering through World War II's war-torn skies, the German Flak 18, an 88mm anti-aircraft cannon, marked its dominance against Allied Spitfires and Mustangs. As it evolved into the Flak 36 and then the formidable Flak 88, its 17-pound shells, propelled at over 900 meters per second, painted the skies with black plumes of smoke, every explosion hurtling shrapnel over 200 yards. This evolution extended its reach down from the skies and onto ground targets, devastating tanks like the Sherman and T-34, and crushing fortifications from a staggering 1.5 miles away. On battlefields from North Africa's deserts to Russia's icy fronts, the Flak 88, with its long, imposing barrel, was adapted for use aboard armored vehicles such as the Elephant, Jagdpanther, and even the menacing King Tiger tank. Starting as an anti-aircraft weapon, it repelled the Allies' relentless aerial and ground assaults as one of the Third Reich's most effective weapons. Aircraft were used for military purposes for the first time during the Italian occupation of Libya in 1911. Although they were primarily given reconnaissance roles, the cunning Italians soon employed them for primitive bombing raids. During World War I, all major European armies employed aircraft by the hundreds to aid in ground operations. From intelligence gathering to dogfights and bombing raids, aircraft grew larger and became faster and more devastating when attacking enemy troops. Thus, armies retaliated with ground ordnance to strike them down from below. From mounted machine guns to standard artillery pieces on improvised mounts, the artillerymen did their best to neutralize hostile aircraft with everything they had at their disposal. In 1916, Germany began to experiment with new weapons tailored specifically for an anti-aircraft role. The Prussians realized existing artillery pieces of medium caliber were ineffective even against enemy balloons and tried using larger caliber artillery to take down aircraft. As a result, the German forces delivered trucks armed with powerful 8.8cm anti-aircraft guns to the Western Front. These were devastating Krupp and Erhardt guns employing Kaiserliche Marine, later renamed Rennmetall, to secure Prussian airspace. This new gun became one of the war's most effective anti-aircraft artillery pieces, combining a powerful cartridge with high muzzle velocity, allowing the Flak 18 to reach impressive altitudes and strike down enemy reconnaissance aircraft. Prussia lost the war despite its effectiveness and could not improve its new, dedicated anti-aircraft artillery piece. As part of the Treaty of Versailles, the victors forbade the German military from producing heavy artillery during the interwar period. But the Germans found a way to discreetly work on another gun through Krupp engineers working overseas in Sweden. In exchange, the Swedish received research and production facilities. It was the beginning of the legendary Flak 88 artillery gun. Swedish Bofors factories became the melting pot of new ideas, while Krupp engineers experimented with new guns. In the late 1920s, the German Reichswehr faced pressing need for dedicated anti-aircraft defense beyond its limited reliance on 7.92mm machine guns. Thus, Krupp received a critical order in September 1928 to construct an anti-aircraft gun capable of firing a 10kg round at a staggering muzzle velocity of around 850 meters per second. The specifications were rigorous a gun that could rotate 360 degrees with an elevation range from minus 3 to 85 degrees, mounted on a cross-shaped base with four outriggers. On a four-wheeled bogey, the guns were towed at a maximum of 30 kilometers per hour. Later modifications included requests for a firing rate of 15 to 20 rounds per minute and high explosive rounds with a delay fuse. Initial discussions about the caliber deemed a 7.5 centimeter gun insufficient, opting for the more effective 8.8cm caliber. Despite setting this as a minimum, allowances were made for a larger caliber, provided the gun's overall weight did not exceed 9 tons. In addition, the towing trailer needed to reach 40 km per hour when pulled by a half-truck or larger trucks. In 1931, German engineers returned to the Fatherland and began working on the prototypes. The company delivered several guns and trailers to the army one year later. In 1933, when Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich seized power, the 8.8cm Flak 18 was put into mass production. What followed were improved versions conceived in 1936, 1937, and 1941. With the rearmament of Germany, over 2,000 Flak 18s were produced and shipped for immediate testing with the German Condor Legion involved in the Spanish Civil War. The results were unquestionable. The Flak 18, now dubbed Flak 36 due to its latest upgrade, 
was highly accurate and versatile in combat. The Flak 88 became the pinnacle of German air defense. Its robust 9.4 kilogram shell could tear apart aircraft flying 8,000 meters above. The gun's high explosive rounds, with a delay fuse of up to 30 seconds, delivered substantial destructive power upon impact, making it highly effective against air and ground targets. Equipped with its broad swivel and elevation ranges, this gun could quickly track and target aircraft across the sky, adapting to various aerial attack angles. Furthermore, an effective optical targeting system enhanced the Flak 88's precision, thanks to the ZF-20 sights. Mounted on a mobile carriage, the Flak 36 was designed for efficient transportability, making it versatile with its crew of 10 for almost every combat situation. With a mass of over 7,000 kilograms, a length of 5.8 meters, a width of 2.3 meters, and a height of 2.1 meters, the imposing Flak gun was no small beast, but the train crews could set it up in over three minutes, enhancing the German Blitzkrieg doctrine. Overall, the Flak 88 could discharge around 20 rounds per minute, greatly enhancing its potential to counter aerial threats effectively. These features collectively rendered the Flak 88 a highly effective and adaptable weapon for different situations. In June 1941, at the Halfaya Pass on the Libya-Egypt border, 13 Flak 88s from Rommel's 15th Panzer Division destroyed over 100 British Matilda tanks attacking his positions, paving the way for an anti-tank version of the anti-aircraft gun. Rommel's use of the Flak 88 to destroy armored ground vehicles made the gun even more versatile for different combat scenarios, making it multi-role. In Russia, the Germans used the gun effectively to neutralize Soviet T-34 and KV tanks. The weapon proved so successful for the anti-tank role that Germany took a step forward and adapted the flak for use with the Tiger I, Elephant, and Jagdpanther armored vehicles. This materialized in the 8.8cm PAK-43 and the KWK-43 heavy tank gun of the Tiger II. This made the imposing King Tiger the most devastating tank produced by the Reich. The 88mm anti-aircraft gun utilized three primary types of ammunition. The high explosive shells, equipped with spring wound or inertia operated time fuses, were employed against airborne targets and could be set with delays of up to 30 seconds. These shells were also used for ground targets, featuring percussion fuses with a 0.11 second delay. There were also armor piercing shells used against tanks, which included a tracer and a small base fuse bursting charge. Initially, they were armor piercing composite rigid projectiles with a tungsten core. However, the supply of tungsten ore to Germany was cut off due to Allied diplomacy. Despite this, Krupp engineers were developing an extended barrel 88 that could penetrate Allied tank armor without tungsten, marking a strategic shift in their ammunition design. In its different variants, the German Flak launched a 20-pound shell at over 840 meters per second, reaching an effective altitude of 9,900 meters. Comparatively, the British QF 3.7-inch Mark III fired a 29-pound shell at 790 meters per second, reaching 10,600 meters. Similarly, the American 90mm M1 and the Italian Canona 9053 hit targets at over 10,000 meters. These guns gained an edge with proximity fuses, but were bulkier and less mobile, needing modifications for ground fire. However, they had limited anti-tank use compared to the versatile German 88, which was used both defensively and aggressively. For Germany, the tide changed in 1944 with the Wehrmacht's withdrawal from the Eastern and Western fronts. Renowned for its versatility, the Flak 88 was a pivotal asset in the German defense, proving its worth against air and ground targets. Its reputation as a reliable, powerful, and adaptable weapon is a testament to its combat effectiveness and technological advancements. The Flak 88 remains a significant symbol of German engineering prowess and its lasting impact on artillery design and innovation in warfare.